Hello everybody, welcome back to the workshop. So today I wanted to take and show you another type of bottle opener that you can make uh, off of the blacksmith cheat sheet. For those of you who don't know what the blacksmith cheat sheet is, it is something that my wife has come up with uh, to take and help you with the SEO and descriptions on your listings in order for you to make a living as a blacksmith. So she did this and it will help you on Etsy, Amazon, your own personal website and things like that to find you on search. I'll put a link to that blacksmith cheat sheet down in the description down below. So today we're just gonna make another type of bottle opener. Now this is just gonna be a really simple church key bottle opener, but I'm going to take and do a fantail style. So it's gonna have a little different styling to it and I'll show you how we'll do that, but I'll walk you through the measurements first. So the measurements are four inches or 100 mil long by one inch or 25 mil wide by quarter inch or six mil thick. Uh, I've marked off approximately what would be considered three quarters of an inch or what I believe is 18 mil in length and I've found that in the center of the bar and I've come off the end of the bar 12.5 mil or half inch. So I've come off the end of the bar about half an inch or 12.5 mil and I made uh, three dots to indicate a little slot punch that we'll get to here in a second. So without further ado, let's get smithing on this. I'll get it hot and the first thing we have to do is take and actually fan the tail of this bottle opener. We're taking a heat and we're getting a good two inch section of this hot. And we're going to start in the center and work up that two inches and then work out away from that center to create that fan tail. and I'm using the cross peen of the hammer to do this. So that's how far we've got that in one heat. Now, if you get one side moving a little more than the other, concentrate your efforts on the side that's not moving by turning it around and then hitting it that material closer to you. Uh, you'll find that you have a little better results there. But we are about there. Basically, this is going to take and give this thing just a little bit more dimension uh, which is what we are out after. We want to give this a little bit of dimension and uh, turn it into a neat little bottle opener. After you have your fan tail done, you're going to want to take and knock the little sharp corners off and radius those back in. You can do this with the hammer. We're just trying to put a little bit of a quarter inch radius on those. It's just as quick to do this with the hammer as it is with a file or anything like that. We're just looking for nice little radiuses on the edges there uh, to complete this little fan tail design. So you get that done and you'll be good to go. Just planish out your work. You can have that finished up. Just like so. So now we have the fan tail done. Now the next step is to actually punch our hole. So I'll have to switch to a different pair of tongs. I usually like using a pair of flat stock tongs so for holding plate. I've got videos on how to make all of my tongs, by the way. Uh, if you have any interest, you can look at the playlist sections on making tongs. So I like to use flat bit tongs now, or flat plate tongs that hold really well in order to take and do this next part uh, to do the punching, uh, the slotting and the drifting of this here. So the next part we'll do, we'll heat this all up and we will take these corners off first. We're gonna hammer those corners back first and get this in to look kind of round. Once we've got that done, then we will slot punch and make the church key. We'll go ahead and take off these corners by just hammering on a 45 degree angle. And 
And what this will do is this will help stop some of our carp smouthing that this is going to want to do on us by taking off these corners first. If you don't do this, you're pretty apt to get carp smouth uh, form on the end of the bar. Okay, so there we go. We've got that dressed up. And now we'll take one more heat on this and we will use our slot punch. Now, a slot punch. You can get, you can make a really simple slot punch by going to any of your commercial stores, your Home Depots or any hardware stores, and get yourself a cold chisel. Get yourself a cold chisel and then grind a nice little eighth inch or three sixteenths or sixteenth of an inch flat across the tip there. And then that will allow you to have an easy peasy slot punch right out the gate and you don't have to worry about making them if you don't if you're not up to that speed yet of making your own tooling. Now I like to bring this out at a marking heat using expert third hand control here. I like to mark it out at like I said a lower heat. This way I can get my punch mark started and know that I'm starting it squarely through the piece, which I appreciate to be able to do. And then it's not so hot on the punch as well. So you bring it out at a lower temperature. It's not so hot. It doesn't cause the end of your punch to overheat. Then we'll come out at a higher temperature and now we'll drive that to the anvil and then we'll flip it over and drive the slug out and we'll have the slot punched hole. Okay, bring it out, set it firmly on the anvil. Again, find that slot mark, give it a couple really good whales, and bam, you're down at the surface of the anvil. Flip it over. Look for the eye of the chisel punch cut there, and give it a good couple whacks. Now, if you do this at a slightly lower heat, you'll have better luck of shearing out the plug, which I recommend you do this at a much lower heat, like a black heat, and that slug will come right out of there lickety split. So go ahead and, you know, thin it out, do whatever you got to do. But if you do it at a higher heat like I just did, you'll have a little bit of rag in there that you'll have to clean up. But it's no big deal. Just take your time with the edge of the punch or the chisel and just clean that little bit of rag up there. No big deal at all. So there we have it. So now you have a hole punch through there. Next process will be opening this up. Now we're going to do this a little bit differently. The way we're going to do it is we're actually going to take our punch and we're going to run it down in there a little bit bigger or drift it down through with our punch first to open it up to where we can actually fit our drifts in it. So this is just a, like a large round punch, but I need to get it open enough that I can stick this in there and drift it down to the furthest point on here, which is approximately, oh, I would say, like I said, I want to say it's about five eighths across or 16 mil. So, and yeah, I'd be right on that. So it's about 16 mil across or five eighths inch round there. We're going to drift it up to that point, knock that out, and then we will move up to our larger drift. This drift is just a mild steel drift, and we are going to take that up to one inch in diameter or close to. It'll probably fall just a hair short and be right around about three quarters of an inch or 18 mil in diameter. And hopefully I'm getting that right, that three quarter is 18 mil. It might be 20 mil, but if you can, if my friends from across the pond can correct me in the comment section, for those that are watching and learning this video, I greatly appreciate that. So, let's go ahead and get this heated and drift it. Okay, first things first, we'll go ahead and drift this with the punch. 
just up the shank of the punch, tap it off there. Don't let it get too overheated. And then we're going to go in with our larger, with our round punch. There we go, there's our first stage in that. Voila. And now we'll go ahead and get the drift going a little bit better. So we will heat this up again, really nice and hot, and we will drift it a little bit more. Now, if you look at the top of this, you're seeing a little bit of carp's mouth thing there. Now that's something that you'll wanna address if you can. If you got a thin enough horn, you can put on the horn and dress that out right now, or you might just take a rasp to it uh, or the last, but my favorite, is the bick. If you got a little bick that you can stick in the hardy hole of the anvil, go ahead and do that. So I'll dress that out and then we'll continue to drift. Got a really good high heat on this again. Let's go ahead and continue to drift this open. and knock it off there. So you can see how effective that is by dressing that out to begin with that really, 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 really does help out. So you wanna knock down this. It has a tendency to have a little bit of draw down or suck down. You wanna draw that, you wanna hammer that back out before you go to your next drifting operation. So we're gonna drift this to the final dimension. We went to the final bit here so we'll just continue, we'll hammer the next size drift in there and that'll size it accordingly. I'll go ahead and do that off camera. You don't have to see that. It's basically the same thing. And then it's time to put in our pull tab and then the last bit will give it a little bit of shape. So now, so nobody gets their goats in a bunch here, I want to take and show you what I'm about to do. Now, normally I use just a punch, a quarter inch or three eighths inch round punch, depending on how big the op bottle opener is. And I just drive straight down to pull out our little pull tab that actually hooks under the rim of the bottle uh, to be open, the bottle cap. But this time I'm gonna show you guys a little different method. You can use a ball peen hammer to take and do the same thing. If you don't have a ball punch, you'll set this on there and you will strike it with another hammer. But here's the key. This is where you don't go getting your goats in a bunch. This is a soft face hammer. This is a chunk of mild steel. A chunk of mild steel will not, this is not two hardened faces hammering together. You don't wanna hammer hardened faces together. This is a soft face hammer. So if you see this being used in any of the videos, this is a soft face hammer. And I use this specifically to hit drifts and punches and other hammers and whatnots and what have you. So don't get your goats in a bunch. That's what we're doing right now. So now we're gonna go ahead and bring this out and I'm gonna set it mostly on the piece and only hold about a quarter inch of this ball peen off and we're gonna drive it straight down into the work piece. So getting it set on the anvil Holding it where I told you. And now we're gonna take and work towards the center of the church key. And that will get us our little cavity and pull out that small material. I'm kind of working back in here and then working out. This is giving it an interesting little look, which I like quite well. Don't beat that pull tab too thin. You don't have to kill it, but there you have it. You got that, and voila. You can see the depression there that we have created. So you wanna make sure that you go ahead and dress up anything that's gotten a little wonky since you've been doing that. And you may need to dress the outside of this again, the profile a little bit on that state, like I said, the little bick, like I was talking about. Now for this particular thing, I'm just going to leave it as a forged finish. Uh, that is perfectly fine. I will wire wheel it and then 
go ahead and touch market and all that good stuff. Uh, you can touch market, touch market hot, which that's what I'll be doing because my uh, touch mark is a hot touch mark, or you can do it cold either way. Um, it doesn't matter depending on what your touch mark is. So the sale price of these is anywhere from, you can sell these, these here I wouldn't go any less than $10. And you can sell them up to $50 depending on the styling and how much detail, extra detail you put into them. So stick around for the bonus clip and we will actually open a bottle with this. So that'll be it for today. Uh, for those that don't stick around for the bonus clip, I thank you all for watching. Hopefully you liked it. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, there's a thumbs down. That's always an option. Make sure to check out the Blacksmith Cheat Sheet. Uh, over at blacksmithpdfs.com. You can run over there and get you a copy of that uh, 50 hand-forged items that you can sell. So, that's it for today. Again, God bless you, and we will catch you on the next one. Make sure to stay around for the bonus clip. Psych, you thought I was done. I just forgot. I didn't show you how to shape this. So I'll give you that real quick. Basically the way we shape this is you're gonna to come to the step of your anvil or if you have a swedge block, go ahead and use that. And we're just gonna give it a little bit of curvature to it. Want a little curvature in that direction if we can to make it fit and feel a little nicer in the hand. Again, this isn't technically necessary, but you could just leave it flat, but I think it adds a little something extra special. So that's why I'm going to do it here. Get a hold of that again. Oh. I like to just give it just a little bit of something. Some people can hold on to, some people can enjoy. Go ahead and knock out that corner a little bit. Maybe fan out that corner a little bit. Who knows? might come back and refine those here in just a second but basically want to just give it a little bit of shape Good. now that wants to curve in the opposite direction like so and then the last part here last but not least part if I can stop dropping it you know we like to drop forge things around here is you'll heat it up again and just give this a little bit of a bend forward we want to bend that forward and actually I've got enough heat here I can go ahead and bend it now cold and that's okay basically you want the lip here you want the lip here to be bent out of the way of the pull tab here it will help with opening the bottles so as long as that's all nice and squared up and you haven't left any weird hammer blows anywhere you're done and that's how it's done. So I've already got my touch mark in the back of this thing, made sure I stayed away from there. And we will go ahead and just do a little linseed oil finish on this and then we'll open a bottle. So I'm gonna go ahead and open that bottle now. Again, God bless you. Hope you guys enjoy the rest of your week. Check out that blacksmith cheat sheet. Thanks for watching.